I'm going to give you a very unique hands-on but yet hands-off presentation. And when we're done, the real hands-on, hands-off part will be with all of you. You're going to come up and you can choose whatever instrument you want or both. You can try it out. I'll walk you through it if necessary as much as I can because I'm sure everyone here is going to want to see what it's like to make music out of the air and virtually the only instrument in the world that can create real music without touching. And this uh, instrument is called a theremin, named after its inventor. His Russian name is Lev Sergevich Ter 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 Theremin, who's been anglicized to Leon Theremin. He was born in 1896, and at that time, um, the only radio messages being sent were using Morse code. And uh, it wasn't until around 1906 that the first voice and music transmissions were made across the English Channel using radio as we know it today, basically. So we have a gentleman now that was born in 1896, partook in the Great War, World War I. He was a communications engineer working with phone lines and very basic uh, radio communication with Morse code. And he thought that there was something odd here. Every time he approached this uh, gadget uh, to make some changes or to check what was going on, he noticed the needle would rise in his proximity. And he noticed when he walked back away, the needle would go down. He thought, here's one way to make it easier to see what's going on or hear what's going on. I'll put an oscillator in the circuit. Now, an oscillator is a device that works with electricity. The more electricity goes into it, the faster it vibrates and the higher the pitch. Less electricity going through it, the slower it vibrates, the lower the pitch. So by using that as a scale of reference, you would know, first of all, that there's something changing in the, in the apparatus because it's going up or down. And secondly, you can annotate where the reading would be with the oscillator and perhaps in conjunction with a meter, what the rating is on that gas so they know what type of gas because of its density, how it was being read and being fed through the apparatus, and you can make a record of it for scientific purposes. He, he found out that if he approached it and did a little vibrato on the apparatus, because you have to understand, he was an amateur cellist, okay? So he knew, knew something about playing, well, the cello is more like this, um, and he used vibrato on the strings. So he started to play little ditties on it, little songs, and add vibrato, and without touching it. And he found a discovery here. What if I used electricity now to create music? It never been done before. Everything was acoustic and everything had to be touched. Interface, keyboard, strings. So he built a basic theremin idea and showed it to his comrades. And about two months later, word had gotten around to Lenin himself and they put out a communication that he wanted to see Lev right away. He met up with the premier of the new Soviet Union, showed him briefly how to play his new instrument, and he took to it rather well. Lenin said, I want you to travel the motherland, and I want them to see now this whole new government, what it can do for us, especially with art, electricity and art. You can make music. Oh, by the way, when you come back, I'm paraphrasing now, I want you to go to Europe and travel through Europe showing our device. And then I want you to go to the United States, show your device, set up shop, and work on ideas. Oh, by the way, one more thing. You're working for the state now. I want you to report back anything you see that's important to us that we can claim for our, our own technology. But you're going to infiltrate by showing off your unique instrument and coming up with new ideas while you're there, some of it fed by American technology. So he was covert. He was a bit of a spy as well as an inventor and a performer.